In today's video, we're going to be talking about the Garmin Forerunner 245. And I think this smartwatch or fitness tracker is finally a replacement for my Pebble Time. I really love that watch. I think the Pebble Time was way ahead of its time. And I'll, and I'll explain why I think it's a, a very good contender to replace it. Now, there are a lot of videos on the internet already that focus on the running aspect of it. This is the Forerunner, right? After all, it has the name Runner. I'm going to be focusing more on kind of fitness tracking, strength training, smartwatch kind of features like notifications, and of course, sleep tracking because it has the pulse ox. So let's jump into this video. Let's do a quick unboxing and let's get into the review. Now, like with all Garmin boxes, the unboxing experience is really simple. I really like how their boxes, the presentation is uh, just very light, such a small box. It, it's kind of cool. I like the design of it and unboxing it is quite pleasant in my, in my opinion. And in terms of the box size and how compact it is and how light it is, it really goes to show how light and compact the actual smartwatch or fitness trackers actually are. The first thing I want to talk about is the physical look of the watch and how it feels on the wrist. Right off the bat, it feels really nice. It's super light. I really like the design. It kind of reminds me of the Fossil Sport kind of design. Uh, the, wrap, the wrist strap feels really good. It's really soft, uh, made of a really nice uh, silicone material, and it's definitely not too bad to, to wear to a workout. I do think it's a little big for workouts. That's why I'm still using the Vivo Smart 4. However, I still think it's, it's really small, especially when you fall asleep, it, you don't really feel it. Now in comparison, um, I think to me, lightness is really important. So I don't really care about having like a heavy duty Phoenix 5X or whatever, like this, the crazy metals and the steel heavy case. That to me is not very good for a fitness tracker. I, I don't think it'll be very comfortable to sleep with as well. Uh, in terms of the weight, it's about 38 grams, whereas the Vivo Smart 4, the one that I have right now, is 18 grams. The Vivo Active 3 is about 40 grams and the 945, so the, the one above, two steps above the 245 is 50 grams. So I think 50 grams for me is like the maximum I can deal with. My older watches, my Android Wear watch was around that uh, kind of weight. And you, yeah, I definitely want something that's thin. Um, that's one thing about the 245. It's also really thin, really thin watch. And in comparison to the Pebble Time, I really do think that they're very similar. Now, in terms of the sensors, there's two main ones. One is the heart rate sensor, which is the green light, and then the pulse ox, which is the red light. I noticed that there's a little slight bulge that kind of sticks out of the bottom of the watch that kind of hits your wrist. And I hope that bulge kind of allows for a more accurate reading of your heart rate and your blood oxygen saturation. Whereas with the Vivo Smart 4, it's kind of flat onto the device. So I'm not sure if that means that it's less accurate. In any case, I find that the bulge is not a big deal and it doesn't really affect me. And I noticed that a lot of the Fitbit watches, uh, fitness trackers have this type of bulge. Now, in terms of the physical form factor of this, one of the most defining characteristics are the buttons. And to me, this is a really big win. Um, Especially when you're doing workouts and you're really sweaty and touching the touchscreen can be really annoying. Uh, the buttons are actually very tactile. Um, they're kind of mushy. And the, 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 re the reason why they're mushy is to prevent accident accidental clicking when you like maybe tap something. So they do require some pressure, some actuation force from your hand. But to be honest, I've had no issues using the buttons. I really enjoy using it. It is really nice to see that there's you know, a smartwatch or a fitness tracker manufacturer that embraces buttons and not uses capacitive touchscreen because I feel like capacitive touchscreens are the norm these days and it's kind of like the de, uh, de facto standard. One thing that the Pebble Time had above all the, all the other fitness trackers was that it actually did use buttons and it's really nice to see a return in the Forerunner. So uh, navigating is super quick, super efficient, and you'll definitely like it when your hands get really sweaty. Uh, using buttons is pretty fantastic and you'll learn it's very intuitive and it's really fast to learn. Now, in terms of the performance of this watch, I found it extremely zippy, very fast, very responsive. There's hardly any lag. When I was using the Wear OS watches, it was terrible. Like I would try to read a notification and I would tap it and it you would feel that lag, that kind of like two second delay before you saw your content. With the Forerunner 245, when I use buttons or like tap into two menus, it's instant and it feels really good. That's how a smartwatch should be. It should be shouldn't be a cumbersome to your day-to-day -to -day, day -day life. It should, you should just be able to like see the information you want at a glance and, and just go about your day-to-day -day life. So the next thing I wanna talk about are the smart features and in particular, the smart notifications. And this to me is probably my favorite feature of the Forerunner 245. I think the way that they implemented smart notifications is absolutely fantastic. Now let's start when you first see a notification, you'll get a little title. The little title is what on Android you'll see like kind of like two parts of your notification. One is a title and one is the content. So you'll see the title, it'll flash. 
gives you that context. And then half a second later, you'll see the content of your notification. And the way it's presented on the actual watch, the actual screen, is, is done so well because the watch is, the screen is pretty big and you can see all your content really fast. And it's just getting a little vibrate, getting a little nudge and seeing the notification and being able to kind of just digest it really quickly and then return back to your day-to-day -day life is well executed, well implemented. So kudos to Garmin on making notifications so good. Now on top of that, interacting with the notifications is absolutely fantastic. Just diving into the content of the notification and then scrolling down and then seeing all the actions, all the contextual actions for that notification is amazing. Now this is exclusive to Android. Android has this feature where you can interact with notifications. Developers have the API. They have a developer kit to basically put special actions into notifications. So for example, uh, let's say you're using a public transit app like Transit Now and you want to set a timer. Well, let's say you're tracking a bus. You can set a timer for zero minutes and it just kind of works flawlessly on the watch. So, you know, doing things like muting notifications for Facebook or giving a like, I really like that. And it's definitely something I miss when I have like a more basic implementation of smart notifications is that with the Vivo Smart 4, you can only just read notification. You can't dismiss it. You can't interact with it. So notifications are really fun to interact with. Now with the Forerunner 245, there's this notion of widgets. As you scroll up and down the main menu, you use the buttons, the up and down na navigation buttons to navigate through different uh, widgets. And one of the widgets that you can customize, and there's also an ordering you can do, I'll explain this later, but you can basically specify the order of widgets. And one widget is called notifications. And I really like this widget because it's kind of similar to Wear OS, but you can swipe up, you can see all your notifications at a glance. Here you can just go to that widget, simply swipe up or press the button to go up. You'll see all the notifications. So you get a really nice kind of overview of all the notifications you have. And for me, when I wake up in the morning, I have like a million notifications. And it's kind of nice to see like your entire day's worth of notifications at a glance. And you can just like, oh, this one's important. This one's not important, blah, blah, blah. You can just scroll through the whole list. So I just really like the summary of all the notifications on one screen. Now there's one recent improvement they did to notification and that's in terms of privacy. What you can do is that since the screen is so visible all the time, it's always on, it's 24 seven. Let's say you're in a meeting and you're getting maybe messages from someone or whatever that you don't want people to see. You can basically have a, uh, a gesture where you can like kind of just use your, your wrist motion to actually view the contents of that notification. So I think that's great that they included this type of uh, feature. And you can also, there's also the option to completely hide notifications and that you would have to tap in to see it. So uh, privacy is something that is kind of new to this uh, Garmin watch. Now with smart notifications, I really like that I can receive all my texts. I can reply to them really fast. I like that I can go into the app and customize my replies so they don't look kind of generic. So I find that my day-to-day -day life is easier by just, uh, you know, someone messages me, I can just reply instantly and just kind of go about. So especially with how fast the menus are and how, how using the buttons is just so extremely fast, uh, replying to text is really fast in comparison to Wear OS where it would take for ages to, to reply. Unfortunately, they don't have any voice reply. And I think that's something that is really missing in these types of watches. Now, if you look at the Pebble Time, which was released years ago, they had this technology where you could reply to an SMS or a text message or whatever, and you could use your voice to give a more custom message. I don't know why Garmin hasn't done this. This this is something that is they need to have um, because sometimes you're limited in the set of options that you want to reply with, and they're not very good for the context, but you don't want to take out your phone. I just really wish that they had some kind of voice reply. Obviously that's more computing power and, and more complicated, but Garmin should have this by now. I mean, but Pebble Time did this years ago. But at least thankfully, I never miss phone calls anymore and I don't miss any, any important messages. There are some annoyances with smart notifications. One is that I cannot change the vibration setting. So it's a very strong vibration. You're not gonna miss any notification. That's, that's great, but I wish like on the Vivo, uh, Vivo Smart 4, I can actually customize how strong the vibration is on my wrist. And I find it too strong on the, Gar the Garmin Forerunner 245. So I really wish that I was able to customize that aspect of smart notifications. The last thing I wanna complain about notifications is that I wish there was an option to kind of only enable phone calls and maybe SMS and disable all other types of notifications. You either have do not disturb, which kind of blocks everything, which kind of sucks. The next thing I like about Garmin watches, especially the ones of this class, like the Vivo Active 3 or the Forerunners, is that there is a beautiful always on display screen. And to me, that is the best because I like being able to not have to like do this wrist gesture to see the time. 
I like being able to just quickly glance at it and you know just see the time. That's how a watch should work. And in terms of watch faces, there are so many customizable watch faces on the market that you can download for free. Um, the, the, the favorite one I'm going to show right now, you can see it has beautiful font, it has the weather and stuff like that. Unfortunately, a lot of custom widgets out there, you can't have the combination of your next calendar event and the weather. I feel like calendar event is something that is custom to the uh, Garmin watch face. Now there is a proprietary Garmin watch face that allows you to have three t three types of complications on your smartwatch with where you can have the calendar event and the weather and yada yada. So that's nice, but I, I kind of wish that there was more flexibility in the third party watch face market. The next widget I think is my second favorite and next to notifications is the calendar widget. And the way that they implemented calendar widgets is absolutely amazing. Depending on the order where you put your calendar, it can be like the first one that you scroll when you scroll down. And what you can see is your entire day's uh, worth of calendar events. And I think this is really nice for people who are working kind of busy jobs and they have a lot of calendar meetings. It's really nice to stay on top of your meetings and not miss meetings because it's very rude. And obviously having the watch face with the next upcoming appointment or next meeting is very handy to have as well. So the overview of seeing all your calendar events is well implemented, very legible, very easy to see on this, on this screen. And in terms of setting up the calendar events and all the calendars, it was extremely easy. It kind of just knew all my Google Calendar events. So if you're on Google, um, Google Calendar, whatever, everything is auto synced. All my work stuff was there too. So really easy, no setup required. Okay, so moving down the list, my next favorite feature is the strength training app or kind of activity. Now this is so important for any watch I buy. I noticed that a lot of the Samsung Galaxy Active, the um, kind of like other watches out there like the Fitbits and the and the Wami or the Masfit and all those types of third party watches out there, fitness trackers, they don't do rep uh, tracking, so rep counting. And what I mean by that is when you go to do, when you go to the gym and you wanna do a strength, strength conditioning exercise, um, lifting weights, you know, all that st fun stuff, you wanna be able to kind of, you know, understand what set you're on, how many reps you've done per set, and then basically have breaks between sets. And this to me is such, it's so important for me to stay focused in my gym workouts because I can, you know, not doodle around and kind of walk around and do nothing because I can see the time I take between uh, sets. So when I notice that when I don't have my fitness tracker, I'll like do a set, let's say I do eight uh, chest press, put the weight down, take a break, and then I'm kind of just walking around looking on my phone, not really focused, and maybe five minutes has passed between the next set. So I think being able to kind of hold yourself accountable using these fitness trackers, these uh, strength training rep counters, and seeing how much time has elapsed since the last set is extremely important in terms of just getting into gym, doing your exercises, and then getting out. Now with that in mind, the Garmin 4Runner 245, like all other Garmin fitness trackers, even the Vivo Smart 4, this little tiny guy, can do a decent job at kind of counting your reps. However, if you are very um, stringent on the type of exercise you're trying to record, it's not very accurate. Um, let's say, for example, you're doing a squat, it thinks you're doing a chest press. So that, to me, really sucks in the sense that to get an accurate log or a diary of all the exercises you did for that given day, that given exercise, it's not gonna work. It's just, you definitely have to go into the app and then customize and edit everything. And that is terrible because the funny thing is Wear OS is really good at guessing the correct exercise you're doing. It has this machine learning algorithm that learns over time. It knows the exact movement. It's super detailed. It knows a squat between a chest press. It works super accurate. And I don't know why Garmin can't get this accurate. Now, a lot of other watches, the ones higher up have different types of sensors like a barometer and all these other fancy sensors and stuff like that. I wonder if they're actually more accurate, but I heard they're not. I think they're just using basic accelerometer uh, sensor information and they're just using a very simple algorithm to kind of guess what kind of exercise you're doing. So all in all, it doesn't work. It's not very accurate. However, I discovered this really cool feature called auto set. Now what auto set is, is basically you just turn on your watch, you start fitness tracking um, or strength training tra tracking or whatever, and you just do your exercises. And what it'll do is actually detect the repetitive motion you're doing and then it'll start a set and it'll actually start to set at the right time. And then when you stop that exercise, you stop that movement, that repetitive movement, let's say after eight reps, and you just kind of like just break and you know get, get a drink of water, it automatically detects when that set is done. And this to me is absolutely amazing. I didn't know this feature actually existed on the Vivo Smart 4, and actually it does. I went to the, to the manual, 
And the thing is for the Vivo Smart 4, you have to go into the Garmin app, Connect app, and then enable that for that specific strength training exercise or activity option. Within the Gar Garmin 245, you just go into the strength training and then you just go to the options and you can just turn it on. Now, what I noticed between these two watches, the Vivo Smart 4 and the Garmin 2 Forerunner 245, is that sometimes you'll be doing an exercise, you'll stop, and then you'll walk around, maybe walk around the gym, drink some water, and then it'll kind of detect an exercise, like you start an exercise because maybe you moved your hand a couple times, more than four times, four reps, and it'll start a new exercise. And that was really annoying with the Vivo Smart 4. This one was very inaccurate. I noticed, it does happen very rarely, but I noticed with the Garmin 4 Runner 245 that it actually doesn't actually start, um, it doesn't falsely start a new exercise. It's pretty accurate in terms of starting and stopping exercises. So I found that that feature, the auto set feature, pretty amazing for the strength training app. So um, if you don't care about the type of exercises and you just wanna make sure that you stay focused in the gym, you know, know the time you do between sets, see some really cool information. You can see your heart rate zones. You can see the time. You can see the lapse time for the entire workout. If you can deal with those, those little quirks and you don't mind maybe editing the exercises after you do the exercise, it's pretty good. I, I really like it. I think given that beggars can't be choosers, I mean, Wear OS and Garmin has this feature. If you know any other fitness tracker or smartwatch that does this just as well, uh, please let me know because I know the Samsung was a terrible implementation. I don't know if Apple iWatches do that or whatever. And I want to make one quick note between Wear OS implementation of rep counting and the in terms of the strength training app versus Garmin watches. The one thing I kind of like more about Garmin watches, although the Wear OS is more accurate in detecting the, t the correct type of exercise you are performing, the one thing I like about the Garmin watches is that when you, perhaps through auto set, stop your kind of set and you're just taking a break, there's just a timer that elapsed. It's saying, you know, one, two, three, blah, blah, blah. Like it's counting the time between your next set. And with the Wear OS implementation of the strength training app, it actually just does a predefined countdown. So you can set it to 30 seconds, 60 seconds, whatever, two minutes. And then once that countdown is over, it doesn't count down anymore. It's like, it's, it starts detecting the new exercise. With the Garmin, you kind of have to start the new exercises. So you can actually, I feel like it's more accurate to determine the time you're actually lifting versus the time you're resting. And the, and knowing the time between sets of how much time has elapsed, let's say you took a three minute break between two chest presses, two sets of chest presses, it kind of shows that you are wasting a lot of time in the gym. So I kind of like this implementation a little more. I find with the Wear OS, it, you know, counts down 30 seconds and then expects you to start your next set right away, which you may not. And you might be, you know, doing something, looking on your phone for a good five minutes and you're like, oh, I better do my exercise. So just one little note between the differences between the implementation of Wear OS fitness tracking or strength training uh, tracking versus Garmin's. Okay, so yet another really important feature is sleep tracking. And to me, this is super important because I have sleep apnea. I need to be able to monitor my sleep uh, it's super important to be able to see how much deep sleep I got versus light sleep versus REM sleep. And then obviously there's the pulse ox, which is their uh, way of saying SpO2 or your blood oxygen saturation level during your sleep. Quick summary of pulse ox is that basically if you have sleep apnea, which is you stop breathing during sleep repetitively over set, let's say an hour, let's say you stop 10 times, you're, you have the potential for your blood oxygen saturation to go down because your body isn't breathing. You're not getting oxygen into your blood and it can just reflect that in terms of a percentage. The thing I like about the 4 Runner 245 versus let's say the, the, the 645, which doesn't have pulse ox or the Vivo Active 3, that one doesn't have pulse ox, it sucks, right? And the Vivo Smart 4, this tiny little tiny cheap watch has a pulse oximeter, is that I find that the pulse ox is really cool, the interesting stat, but I don't know how accurate it is because, I mean, I compared this to, um, I did a review on this, the low key uh, pulse oximeter, which is kind of like a ring or kind of like a kind of strap that you can just put the ring on your finger. And that thing is super accurate. It knows, it can track the entire night and you can see like when you drop your, when your blood oxygen saturation drops down. And I find that the readings on the pulse ox for this 4 Runner 245 or even the Vivo Smart 4, kind of, kind of wild, kind of crazy. I've actually test this, the, tested the pulse ox on a healthy person and it showed that they were doing pretty poorly in terms of their blood oxygen saturation. Now, I don't know if that's because they didn't put it on correctly or they're moving around or like blah, blah, blah. That, that stuff can mess with the readings. But they wore the low-key 
uh, ring sleep monitor in that show that, that that person was completely healthy. Like their blood oxygen saturation was, you know, over 95% through the entire night. Another thing I want to note about pulse ox is that it only detects four hours. The reason is, and I was a little upset about this, but I can totally see why they did this. They want to save battery. Uh, the pulse ox is this big red glowing light, which doesn't bother you during sleep because you're pretty much well asleep at that point. It uses a lot of battery. The algorithm of the Connect, or sorry, the, the Garmin watch needs to say like, okay, this person has been into sleep. Okay, let's initiate the uh, pulse ox monitoring. And then this person is probably gonna get out of sleep soon, so let's stop it. So it consistently measures four hours. And that, I think, is a good sample. If four hours is a lot of time. It can kind of give you a fair assessment of what, how well you're doing. But unfortunately, I just don't know how accurate it is. And I kind of use it as more of a relative, the percentages. So let's say one night I had an average of 93%. That's not bad, it's not great. And, but then some nights when I'm feeling really terrible and the next, you know, I wake up the next morning, I know I had a lot of apneas. I didn't use my CPAP therapy. I noticed that there is a dip in the average SpO2 percentage, maybe like 90% or something like that. Maybe using the relative stats of this pulse ox is helpful in some sense of seeing how well or how poorly you're doing in terms of sleep. So I take this information with a grain of salt, but I do think it's valuable. I think it's there for a reason. In terms of like general sleep tracking, I think it's very accurate. I actually compared this to like the, the Huawei Watch 2, the Fitbit Charge 3, um, this this one here, the Vivo Smart 4. And in terms of the, the Huawei Watch 2, it's got a very accurate type of reading. It's, the heart rate is like very accurate. And I noticed that in terms of start and stop and the amount of deep sleep versus REM sleep is pretty accurate. So, I mean, between all these watches, they've, they're doing a really consistent, they're all very... I mean, I had like three sleep trackers on me at one point testing this out and they all reported very similar types of um, data. So in terms of the non pulse ox version of this, the just the regular sleep tracking, I think it's very accurate. And given the size and how light this is and how compact and slim it is, I think it's a really good companion to go to sleep with every night. It doesn't really bother you. So in summary, if you really care about the pulse ox, I really recommend getting something like the low key sleep ring monitor or the wrist strap sleep monitor. I think that's going to be more accurate in terms of measuring the actual you know, drop in your SpO2 or your blood oxygen saturation reading. I would really use the pulse ox as more of a kind of relative judgment. And another thing I want to say is that I kind of wish that I was able to add notes to my sleep uh, diary. I just kind of frustrates me that I can't go into my sleep and then, you know, say like, I don't know, I didn't wear my CPAP machine that night. And I can correlate this data and see like, oh, I had one hour deep sleep. That was, that was terrible. And here's the reason why. I really wish they had this simple add a note, like add a, add a note to your, um, to your sleep. It's kind of weird. So with the connect app, uh, looking at your sleep tracking data has much improved. I find that when you, as soon as you wake up, all your sleep data is kind of synced over really fast. I remember a year ago, it would take a while for the algorithm or the computation to show your accurate sleep data. Now it's like pretty much instant. And it's, uh, obviously, like I said, very accurate. You can actually seek on the X axis and see the X at the specific time, the specific Y value. So like, so I really like how the Connect app has really made it really easy and very nice to see all your information for your sleep. Now, speaking of other sensors, the heart rate monitor is pretty damn accurate. I compared this to the Loki uh, heart rate monitor and that was pretty much perfect one-to-one. -one. I also compared this to the Fitbit Charge 3 and the Huawei Watch 2 and I noticed that the heart rate is actually very accurate. And I noticed that during movement, like during exercise, the heart rate is still very accurate. And this could be attributed to the little bulge, kind of the improvement over this Vivo, Vivo Smart 4. So all in all, I think the heart rate is very accurate and gives you pretty good results. Now, the one thing that is consistent amongst all Garmin fitness trackers and smartwatches is the Connect app. And I think that the Connect app is absolutely amazing. It's very intuitive. It looks very pretty. All the information is there. Like I said before, you can actually see the detailed information as you long press on that graph for your sleep data, for example, you can see all your activities, you can customize things, you can add things, it's just really good. The Connect app on your phone under Android or iOS is fantastic, very customizable. Another thing that I like about their software is that there's actually a web app that's pretty comprehensive. Like it, you can go on your laptop or your desktop com uh, computer and see all your data there and you pretty much get the same features. So I mentioned a lot of positives about the Garmin Forerunner 245. I really like this watch, but in terms of this being like the perfect watch, there are some things that I really, I'm not too happy about. One is the cost. It's around $400 Canadian plus tax and all that. For such an expensive watch, especially if you compare that to the Apple Watch or others, 
Android Wear OS watches, it's really dang expensive. And I don't want to take this really expensive watch to, you know, skateboarding or something like that, doing some extreme sports. I feel like I'm going to scratch it. In fact, I already did kind of get a little ding or a little scratch on the uh, on the glass of the, the screen. Maybe I'm just like, I don't have a lot of money, so I can't like just go out and be reckless with it. So I feel like I had to treat this watch more as like a traditional watch where I didn't want to take it out on sports. And I think that defeats the purpose of having a fitness tracker that's on you 24 seven. If you're going to remove it, you don't want to get like sunscreen or you want to get like water on it, like uh, lake water or ocean water on it. I'm going to be like very careful with it. It kind of sucks. I wish it was cheaper. Maybe it was cheaper. I wouldn't really care about like kind of hurting it or whatever. One thing that really annoys me, given that I, I paid $400 for this watch, there's no Garmin pay. Well, like what the heck, man? Like this is an expensive watch and you don't have a feature that's on the Vivo Active 3 and that's super cheap now. So like less than $300 now. And it doesn't have Garmin Pay. Like this would have been the perfect watch if it had Garmin Pay. I mean, at least give us that feature and maybe that would justify such a high price. And yes, I can upgrade to the older 645 even though it's a higher version, but that was like kind of an older model. It doesn't have pulse ox. It doesn't have some of the newer features. So I wanted the newer features in the 245 with Garmin Pay. And for that, I would have to double the price, maybe more than double, and get the 945. And that is a heavier watch, more hefty, has features I don't care for, like music and maps and all that other garbage, whatever. So I really, I just wish they would add Garmin Pay. I just don't understand the decision there. It's, you know, having to double up and pay almost double just to get Garmin Pay is kind of pointless for me. They should at least have a tiered system where, kind of similar to the Fitbit Charge 3, where there was a special edition where perhaps maybe the music version had the Garmin Pay or something like that. You pay an extra... 20 to 40 dollars to get garmin pay another thing that i think that is really lacking with these forerunner watches is there's no voice reply and this is a feature that was introduced on the pebble time watch years ago so i don't know why they don't have this yet i mean maybe they have to put a microphone and it requires more like parts and stuff and waterproofing would be more complicated but being able to do kind of voice kind of voice assistant would be amazing obviously but that's asking for too much i think just basic voice replies would be really nice and lastly, for battery life, it's kind of mediocre. I've been getting five to seven days. I think with the Pulse Ox, it does take a lot of uh, kind of like the battery from it, but um, it's it's okay. Uh, I'm not complaining about the battery life. It's just not super good because it's definitely a lighter watch and it has less capacity for a battery. So in conclusion, I think that the Core Runner 245 is an amazing watch. The look and feel of it, the design, using the buttons to navigate, the, the amazing performance, all the uh, features that it come with, the smart features, absolutely fantastic i really like this watch however i just think it's a little too expensive i think if they dropped it maybe 50 dollars to 100 dollars, or at least add garmin pay it would justify such a high price anyways that's it for this video of the garmin for runner 245 i really hope you enjoyed it please let me know down below in the comments what you guys thought about it do you agree about my comments do you think it's too expensive the lack of garmin pay what do you guys think about that Anyways, please give a like. It really helps out the channel. And also, I'm trying to get to 1,000 subscribers. So definitely uh, click the subscribe button if you're interested in wearable type of content. I post a lot about this every week. So I'll see you guys in the next video.